No matter how careful we all are, eventually injury happens to all of us. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I healed a really, really bad ankle sprain. I'm going to talk about some of the techniques that I used to heal it up, and also some of the items that I made sure I had on hand to help in the healing process. Whether you have an ankle injury right now and you want some tips on how to get healed, or if you want to be prepared for the future and know what items you should really have on hand ready to go if you ever do have an ankle injury, this is the video for you. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, I want to share with you how I was able to heal up my ankle after a really, really bad ankle sprain. Now, because we're talking about something uh, that's of a medical nature in this video, I need to remind you to not listen to anything that I'm saying in this video, and don't do anything that I'm suggesting that I did uh, to myself to heal up my ankle. What you should do is talk to a medical professional, and whatever they tell you to do, you should do that. Now, notwithstanding the fact that oftentimes in the past, medical professionals have advised people to do one thing, and then later on it was found out through scientific studies that that was actually bad advice, forget all about that. Whatever a medical professional tells you to do, you should absolutely do that, and don't listen to anything that people like myself have experienced firsthand and are sharing with you on here. So this is just, it's just an entertainment video, and I'm just kind of share what I, what I did. So first off, how did I sprain my ankle? It's kind of an interesting story, actually. I was teaching an outdoor wilderness safety class, and after that class ended, thankfully after all the parents had taken their kids home, uh, I ended up uh, spraining my <laughs> ankle. Uh, what, the reason that it happened was because uh, the kids that day had been digging, uh, getting stones for you know the project that we were doing, and I told the kids to make sure they cleaned up and left the place the way that they found it. And one of these holes, which was right in the middle of a trail, uh, the, the kids had, they'd filled it back in with some light leaves. Essentially, they left a trap for me. And when I was walking down the trail, I just, I wrenched my uh, ankle into that that hole with like really steep sides. They pulled a boulder out of it or something like that and put like light fluffy leaves over it. It was the worst angle sprain I'd ever had. I had to drive home over a half an hour. I was using my left foot for doing the driving because it was my right foot that was sprained. And um, yeah, worst sprain I'd ever had. And I had to really pull out all the stops. So uh, this is what I did to try to get it back. And at this point, it's like, you know, not, I'm not going to say 100%, but it's, you know, 99% uh, right now after a couple of months. And, uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So the first thing that I did is I had to stay off of it. Uh, as part of my preps, I have crutches. I think it's really important to have crutches. I'm not going to suggest you go out to a medical supply co uh, company and buy crutches, but keep your eyes open. They're oftentimes available for practically nothing at places like Goodwill, Salvation Army, if you can get like transfer stations at uh, <clears throat> you know places where you bring your, your trash. Oftentimes uh, towns will have you know a place for stuff to give away. Uh, I've been able to find a lot of great things at places like that especially crutches, those are always the kind of thing that people are given, uh, you know, from their medical insurance, and then they just, you know, they get rid of them because they don't think that they'll ever, ever need them again. So those are really easy to get for uh, cheap or for free. So get yourself some crutches and just have them in uh, the standby. I absolutely was using crutches for the first week. I couldn't put any weight on the ankle at all. And the more weight that you can keep off of it, uh, the better. So have some crutches in your preps and have them ready to go. You also want to immobilize the ankle, which means to keep it from doing all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> And uh, there's a couple different ways of doing that. One is to use what's called an air cast, uh, which is a, a large plastic boot that has these inflatable bladders on the side, and those are great. Uh, but I did not have one of those at the time when I sprained my ankle. I subsequently actually was able to find one at one of these free stores, like a transfer station, and now I've got it in my preps. Uh, but at the time when I sprained my ankle, I didn't have that, so I had to... Um, you know, come up with another way of immobilizing my ankle, and I'll talk about that just in just a moment. But before I jump to that, I want to mention that if you do find an air cast for free somewhere or, you know, for cheap at like a, th a thrift store or something, make sure that you have both the air cast, which is the, uh, the plastic boot, and the bladders are also still in it, and you have an inflator because they will have an inflation device that will fill up those bladders. It's not going to do you any good unless you can inflate those bladders up. So if you find the air cast, make sure you have the inflation tool. And I was able to buy an inflation tool for my air cast later on because the air cast, uh, when I got it for free, didn't come with the inflation tool. I'm going to put some links down in the description below uh, to you know where I got some of this stuff because actually some of it, uh, that inflation tool took a little bit of digging. So I'll have links down in the description below, but I would recommend definitely against buying things like crutches and even like an air cast um, online because you're going to pay so much more money than you would if you find it just at a thrift store. So keep your eyes open for things like that at thrift stores, but links down in the description are there if you feel like you want to get it, uh, you know, and not have to wait and 
search around in all the thrift stores. So what did I do because I did not have an air cast? Well, what I did was I used a uh, wrapping technique and I don't have professional uh, wrapping bandages. What I ended up doing is I had an old sheet which has holes in it, which I kind of use as rag material now. And I cut a strip out of it. It was like maybe about five inches wide or so. And I use that for wrapping around my ankle. I did a couple of wraps right around the ankle itself. And then I started doing figure eights around the bottom of the foot. So wrap around under the bottom of the foot and then back around the ankle and then under the foot and then back around the ankle and just kind of built the area up to try to immobilize it so it wasn't so easy to have these kind of motions uh, just pop into it. Just when you're kind of like shaking your foot and your, uh, you know, your foot kind of, or I'm sorry, you're shaking your leg maybe and your, your foot's kind of like jiggling around at the end of it. You want to really immobilize it. The other thing that I did was that I elevated my foot as often as I could. Now it's my personality that I always want to go, go, go. And I, and this is something that you should not do, as I did, is I had a lot of trouble waiting long enough to let it heal. And I ended up re-spraining my ankle several times doing, well, I was hunting porcupine out in the, in the woods in the middle of the night, and I kept kind of retweaking my ankle. I would be doing uh, like wood splitting, construction work. You know, I, I would keep trying to push the envelope. And that's not something that I would suggest you emulate. You really want to you know, wait as long as you can. Now, my personality it didn't really work for that uh, because I don't know, that's <laughs> just the way I am. I, I don't like just sitting around. But um, when I could convince myself to sit around and do something, like maybe watch a movie with my boy, I'd always try to elevate my ankle and just get it up so that the swelling would go down. Um, and <clears throat> that was all I really did for the swelling. Now, I know that there are pharmaceutical, uh, pharmaceuticals that you can take to help with inflammation. Uh, I didn't do any of that. Uh, you know, maybe your medical professional will advise you to, and I'm not going to comment whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just, you know, that wasn't the route that I took. What I did do for inflammation was any kind of spices that have anti-inflammatory properties, and I'm not going to list them because YouTube will probably delist this video if I say any of them, but there may or may not be spices. And by spices, maybe I mean, uh, you know, prescription medications. Maybe I'm calling those spices. Who knows what I'm talking about right now, but uh, if you were to kind of bumble around, you might find things that are referred to as spices, which are, there is a suggestion that they might have anti-inflammatory uh, properties. And the way that I look at it is whether it's true or whether it's not true, as long as it's not going to hurt you, you may as well try it. I think that's medically safe advice. And uh, so I was adding a lot of those kind of things to my diet. So that's the only kind of like anti-inflammatories that I took that and elevating the thing. So that got it most of the way. And uh, the last thing that I did, which was really uh, kind of some magic sauce here, and this is actually probably something that you, you might want to talk to a, oh, actually, forget it, all this stuff you want to talk to a medical professional about. But this is the kind of thing where I actually spoke to someone who was a, um, what do they call them? Uh, People who help people rehabilitate when they get an injury. You know what I'm talking about, that, jo that old job. I just can't think of the, the title of that job. But, I, you know, I know someone and they used to do uh, rehab. Is it called it like rehab? I don't know. But one of these people that helps people, uh, man, it's going to bother me. What? Can you write it down in the comments below? What is that job where they help people to... Uh, anyway, I spoke to someone who had that mystery title job and he had suggested uh, this to me and I think this really helped a lot was uh, doing some flexing now it wasn't the kind of thing that he recommended that you do right away when you're trying to uh, you know keep your ankle from moving but as soon as like uh, the the healing starts I don't I don't know this, this is one of those points where it is good to have some training in this stuff but uh, you know at some point when uh, it feels like you can kind of start moving your ankle without there being kind of pain. This is the way that he uh, said it to me. You know, uh, again, you know, this is the kind of thing I'm just relaying my own personal experience. Because th this is a place where I, you know, I wouldn't feel comfortable saying this is what you should do and this is when you should do it. But as soon as my ankle was starting to feel as though you know I, I could move it without it hurting, what I would do is I would just kind of go through uh, uh, stretching exercise, uh, exercises, especially in the morning before I got up and started using it. When I would be in bed, I would have uh, you know, my legs just there and I would uh, bring my leg, you know, my foot up as much as I could and slowly down. And the way he suggested it uh, to me was that you don't want to push it into pain, but you want to just kind of push it right up to, right up to that edge you know, before it starts feeling uncomfortable and, and just kind of keep that, that flexibility um, and range of motion going and again, Especially in the morning, I think it was beneficial after my ankle hadn't been really moving all night and um, 
you know, before I started moving around for the day. So I would do that and both up and down and I would do kind of up with my, my foot angled to the left and up with my foot angled to the right and the same with it down, angle to the left, angle to the right. And I would just kind of go, uh, go through that. Again, not pushing into pain, but just kind of, uh, kind of pushing right up to that to try to keep that mobility in the ankle. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is uh, September, and I sprained my ankle in the spring, so it really took all summer uh, to heal up. And that might sound like, well, I don't want to listen to this guy because <laughs> I want to heal up a lot faster. And, uh, you know, that's a legitimate point of view, and I would definitely say that I made mistakes while I was doing this, and I referenced them earlier, where I just didn't wait long enough before I got out there and was walking over uneven terrain and, uh, you know, putting putting uh, pressure on it. So I think that would be one of those things where I, I suggested some things that I thought helped me, and that would be one thing that I thought was uh, detrimental uh, to my healing was that I just couldn't wait long enough. And again, that just comes down to my personality, and um, you know, we all have to deal with our personalities as we get them and and uh, you know, <laughs> try to control them as best we can when they maybe don't have our. Uh, our best interests at heart. So I hope you found that uh, this video helpful. Uh, you know that is what I did to kind of get my ankle back. Like I said, it's about maybe 99%. So I'm still kind of going uh, easy on it. I'm not jumping off of any high, uh, you know, leaps down to the ground or anything like that. And you know, as you know, as my body ages, generally I find more and more I, I'm feeling like that animal in a cage where there's things I want to do, but. <laughs> I'm learning my own limitations, so I'm, uh, well, it's like that flexibility. It's like I'm, I'm pushing it up to a certain point, but not, uh, not going crazy with it because, uh, well, you only get one body, and when you start busting it up too badly, uh, sometimes it doesn't treat you that well. So if you've had a, uh, an ankle injury, injury, I hope that you will have as mu uh, much uh, success with it healing as I ha uh, have. If anything, I think one of the good things about injuries, whatever they might be, is that once we get through them, and this goes for a sickness, like illnesses, cold, flus, things like that also, is that once you get through that period, it really makes you appreciate having a basic functioning body. And, um, you know, I guess that's not a bad reminder from time to time to remember how good we have it when we're normally just kind of taken for granted when everything works properly. That's it. Good luck and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.